Good evening and welcome to Altos, your weekly Catholic news program here on Trinity TV and now on TTT. I'm Roger Sands sitting in for Neil Parsonlal. In our top stories this week, Archbishop Gabriel Malze of St. Lucia has intervened in the impasse between Bishop Clyde Harvey and Father Gerard Paul. The Ascension Sunday collection this weekend will go towards schools. We will explain the importance of this activity. A TNT national has been chosen to represent the Caribbean Church at an International Youth Congress later this month. And later, we speak with Vicar for Communications, Father Robert Christo, on the significance of the Church's World Social Communications Day this Sunday. Our top story, we continue to monitor the situation in Grenada. Metropolitan Archbishop Gabriel Malze has upheld the suspension of Father Gerard Paul, urging him to humbly comply not only with the suspension, but with, quote, the special and personal requirements as a precondition to being reinstated into the ministry of the church, unquote. In his statement to the Catholic community of Grenada, issued after a two-day visit, he acknowledged that the Grenadian Church was in pain as a result of the impasse and differing opinions on the parties involved. However, he reiterated that the Church is one holy Catholic and apostolic Church and as such, right order must be upheld, quote, in how we work together, how we uphold the promises and vows, and how we correct each other, unquote. Archbishop Malze also recommended that Father Gerard Paul give serious consideration to the effect his actions had on the Church. The leadership of the, uh, of the diocese, Archbishop said, extended fraternal love and support to Father Paul and said he will be provided with all the necessary help to complete the requirements for his reinstatement. Transforming Catholic primary and secondary schools is underway and Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon is urging generous support for a special collection at Masses this Sunday, the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord. Laura Pickford Gordon spoke to, to the Chief Executive Officer of the Catholic Education Board of Management, Sharon Mangru, about why schools need support both financial and otherwise. The Catholic Education Board has embarked on a literacy program, teacher training, and quality assurance program. A new initiative to improve its primary schools involves assessing standard two children to identify gaps in the education needs and develop plans. And these are areas in which we are going to need additional assistance. Because, for example, if we suspect that a child is dyslexic, we need to have the child tested and cost a little bit of money. Uh, recently, we priced what it would take just to assess a child who we recognize as having some problems in school. It starts at about $5,000. Right? And that is with getting special concessions. There are 118 Catholic primary schools across the country. The state provides major funding for schools, but additional support is required for repairs and continuous maintenance. We need to do continuous maintenance of the schools. The sewer systems, the electrical systems, um, they, uh, they tend to have problems nearly all the time because of the age of the schools. The Catholic Board wants parishioners to get involved to support the schools in their communities. But the principal is very welcome in the assistance that can be provided. Money will be used to buy those services that have to be bought to pay for the goods that we have to pay for. The services that parishioners can provide is going to reach the spirit of the reaching hearts of our children and our teachers. I am Lara Pickford Gordon for Catholic News Altos. And we urge you to give generously. Well, if you work in Port of Spain, be sure to attend any of the midday masses during the week at Sacred Heart Church on Richmond Street or Holy Rosary Church on Park Street. The Work and Workers A Blessing for Our City initiative is on for this the month of May. Videographer Andre Burton attended last Wednesday's mass at Sacred Heart where the celebrant was Father Peter Adwaka. Before the end of the Mass, Father Adwaka blessed workers present at both Masses at the churches, and the Masses were dedicated to church workers, public servants, administrative and clerical staff, engineers, and those who work in the media. Masses from the week of May 
13th to 17th will be dedicated to workers in the business community, the service sector, bankers and financial services, social workers, counsellors and the entertainment industry. In some parish news from over in Tobago, the Men's Ministry hosted a Men's Mass on Sunday the 28th of April at the St. Anthony's RC Church in Mason Hall. Approximately 35 men from various districts in the St. Joseph Parish in Tobago were in attendance. The number was complemented by 20 ladies. In keeping with the male-led Mass, the men took charge of various aspects of the service. Preaching the homily on Acts 9 verses 26 to 31, Father Leslie Tankai urged the men to follow Barnabas' example, standing up for what is right even when alone or unpopular. At the end of Mass, attendees were invited to partake in a sumptuous Creole breakfast which was prepared and served by the men. In some school news, uh, it was a day the children of Lochmaben RC will not forget as they got a tour of some mighty helicopters from the Delaware National Guard. This was on Tuesday the 7th at the Cedrus Recreation Ground. The tour for schools in Cedrus was arranged by the U.S. Embassy. The children got a close-up view of the different areas of the helicopter and gained a valuable insight on military aviation. They also heard personal experiences from Major General Michael Barry and his crew. We're sure it was an exciting experience for the children and maybe there are some future um, aviators among them. Well, 23-year-old Shireen Goodridge from St. Paul's Parish in Coover has been selected as the youth delegate to attend the International Youth Ministry Congress in Rome from May 22nd to 26th. Organized by the De Castri for Laity, Family and Life, the Congress brings together youth leaders from around the world to discuss and shape the future of youth ministry in the Catholic Church. The theme of this year's Congress is Synodal Youth Ministry, New Leadership Styles and Strategies. Goodridge told Catholic News Altos that she was looking forward to the trip. I am extremely honored and excited to represent the AEC Youth at the International Youth Ministry Congress in Rome. This is a unique opportunity to collaborate with peers globally and to contribute initiatives that will inspire other Catholic youth in our community. Goodridge will be joined by Archbishop Kenneth Richards of Kingston, Jamaica, chairman for the AEC's Youth and Vocation Commission at, as the regional delegates. The Congress is aimed at strengthening youth ministry worldwide. And the news from Rome, new norms for the discernment of apparitions and other supernatural phenomena will be published on May 17th by the Dicastri for the Doctrine of the Faith, this according to the Vatican Press Office. Cardinal Victor Manuel Fernandez, Prefect of the Dicastri, spoke about increasing reports of spiritual, psychological and sexual abuse tied to fall mysticism in a written interview with OSV News in February. Here is more from Rome Reports. Marian apparitions and supernatural phenomena can be controversial and are very topical. For example, in March, the bishop of an Italian diocese discouraged devotion to a statue of Our Lady allegedly weeping blood. The Vatican has also issued warnings against some alleged Marian apparitions and miracles. The Pontifical International Marian Academy has already expressed its concern. We Mariologists are very concerned about a growing worldwide phenomenon, pseudo-apparitions. Many alleged messages, as we are seeing, are negative. They generate fear and terror. And this is not the image of God that Jesus taught us. The last time the Vatican's doctrinal office issued norms for evaluating alleged apparitions and reports of supernatural events was back in 1978. There will be, this will be the third doctrine from the Dicastri in five months. We'll take a short break and when we return, Vicar for Communications, Father Robert Christo joins us live on set. But as we leave you for this short break, take a look at this week's trivia question. <music> Thank you. 
and welcome back to Altos here on Trinity TV and TTT. Well, joining us on set is Father Robert Christo, Vicar for Communications, ahead of World Day of Social Communications, which will be celebrated this Sunday, May 12th. And Father, thank you very much for thank you, thank joining you. us. And tell us about the significance of this day, World Day of Social Communications. Can I add, I love to be Catholic. Um, after Vatican II, the church is so proactive. They recognized the avalanche of information going to be coming out in social And Vatican II was in the 70s, 60s. 62. Right. So about four years after, the Pope in his wisdom says, you know, I have to see how much you've got to get a balance and have responsible communication for the common good to enhance the ministry. Because he expected this to go like a digital continent. I mean, wisdom, early o'clock. Right. And that is about 57 years ago. Right. So the very fact I'm listening to you and you're listening to me, we are communicating by nature. So that it's a sender and a receiver. So we are communicating. We are communicating. And the very essence of God is communicative. So God is communicative. So the Father is the lover, the Son is the beloved, and the Spirit is what goes between the Father and the Son. So God's essence, God's nature is communication. So the church is saying, with all this no longer paper, you have TV, you have movies, you have in this, dynam this dinosaur dynamite coming out, which is internet, uh, um, um, planet internet. What can we do to enable people, enable ministry? But you have to put some barriers and boundaries on it. And thus formed 57 years ago, 58 years ago, World Communication Day, to see how best to harness it, to see how best to understand, um, to go to the ends of the earth if people aren't reading paper. In 1970, I think, there's a Christian called Elza. He had a cell phone in New York City, 42nd Street. And he says, very soon, you'll have the world in your hand, connected to you, and you will have it all the time. Also very prophetic. Pro Pro I can't even do it without my cell phone today. I know, and I once said in a seminary, I'll never let anybody know where I'm gonna be. Hello. This thing, I have, what I worked in a bank, in a room like 20 feet by 50 feet, computers is on my fingernail now. Yeah. So to tell you, you have the church in this movement to, to the, um, he said, Elza, he says that um, um, the church doesn't have a mission. The mission has a church. Right. Very powerful. The so mission is first, to go to the ends of the earth. There are almost five billion people out of eight billion people in the world who have not learned about Christ or surrendered to him. Who has the feet and the Facebook account and the internet account for God? We. So the church has to be very proactive. So this happened 57 years ago. So every year he's using different themes to make sure that, that you actually responsibly um, work, it, work it for the common good of all, especially the, the poor who have no access to it, and to enhance ministry. And that's the nature of this whole thing. The fact is that we engage in it without even knowing it. The fact is that the very essence of God is, is in it, and the church doesn't have a mission, the mission of the church. So whatever challenge you have, use it. No longer paper. You have TV, you have radio, you have um, and now social, internet, social you have media, artificial, yeah. whatever devices, use it responsibly for the common good to enhance, not replace your ministry. Right. So communications and, and the, the way we communicate over the years has exploded dramatically, as you would have um, mentioned there, away from, well, more than just paper. Now we are seeing artificial intelligence, and the theme for 2024 is artificial mm -hmm. intelligence and the wisdom of the heart towards a fully human communication. So yes. um, the Pope is talking about AI, and it has really crept in in the last year, year and a half, two years. Do you see artificial intelligence as an opportunity or a threat, especially in terms of church communication? I see it as both. Um, both. I, we need okay. yeah, both. It's ambivalent because there's anything else you can get addicted and or this thing to control you, whatever it is, right? Um, the opportunities are great because um, some things are mundane. You can, you can automate it. And time, I mean, I've used it a while ago. It's, it's almost like Google on steroids, you know? But um, it can't replace emotion. It can't replace story. It can't replace re relationality. It can't replace the profession of, of, of journalism. It is a, journalism is a profession of communication. So you have to be careful. It can't replace, it shouldn't, right? And how best to integrate it for, for enhancement because it will reduce error for mundane task. It will advance data analysis and, 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 and bring some cost savings. But you have to be careful with the face recognition and the privacy and the ethical issues. Those are the threats, it's important. Disinformation and making um, 
simulation seem real. I went to New York and I met my cousin and he's on this video game forever, fighting, and believes that when he comes number one in the video game, you're gonna make money. Mm. Simulation and this world has consumed him into a reality that's not real. It's frightening. So he's gonna get a wife, I don't know how he's going to make children, and then he's gonna get a wife or he's gonna make money in this fake world. So you have to be careful it doesn't disintegrate into um, bro uh, a breakage in relationship and a, a, a fake um, correlation between reality and simulation. You've got to be f f really, really cautious what it does because it just enables you to reason and, and, and do intellect intellectualism as much as human beings created can do. But your brain is a brain, your heart is a heart, emotion is emotion. You can't cry. So you have to be careful it doesn't replace personhood. Right. And that's frightening because there's robots, there's chat GPT, and you can get tied up, tied up with it as a, as a kind of cut and paste. But you can't do relationship, you can't tell stories well. You can't bring the heart, um, the wisdom, the virtue of wisdom into it. You can't just come, you need to have that integrated to have a balance. So right now there's opportunity and threat, danger and opportunity. So that kind of unbalance to understand what to do, when to do. And how do you see in, in the Trinidad and Tobago, and even in the wider context, us incorporating artificial intelligence to, to be better communicators? What, what, how do you see that working? Can we? What areas are there? I mean, I have some ground, some rootedness for this because I'm so excited. Um, you can imagine COVID without communication. I mean, we were, we were able to take away from paper. They weren't buying physical paper. And we had to be pushed beautifully into all the channels to get the message out. And we did very well. Online masses, sacramental communion. We can have had communion through under the guise of bread and wine. We had spiritual communion, right? We run a program right here. We are here where we, we use a camera to keep connected to people. People felt lost. I went to COVID hospital every Friday to connect with them virtually, you know, with cameras. Um, there's so much we could have done and are doing by making the stories now using different channels. Know Your Faith was one, very important one. Holy moments from pilgrimages. You know, sometimes you're going away, I went to Holy Land, and all these pilgrimages, you can come back. You lived in Holy Land virtually. So there are so much stories, the 5K tomorrow, people are going to be engaged virtually. Um, I went to New York also. Every morning, we do the reflection for gospel. Right. It's pumped to almost maybe 250,000 people right now in diaspora. They're desperate for Caribbean flavored word reflections. So without this social communication and artificial intelligence integrated into one, you can, you can bring your whole product out there, honoring the, the, the limitations, the boundaries, but understanding the human heart and the wisdom to connect all and integrate it all. Right, and Pope Francis in his message for this year's World Communications Day said, the use of AI can make a positive contribution to the communication sector, provided it does not eliminate the role of journalism on, on the ground, but serves mm -hmm. to support it. You, you, you're of that similar view? Of course, it's a tool, it's for the service of, and we must recognize that journalism is a profession of communication. It cannot replace it, right? You have to safeguard that power of the, the profession and the dignity of work. That's, that has to be pre preserved. And again, distinguish between real and simulated and understand the human heart is a virtue. And, and wisdom, you can't replace it involves human experiences, stories, relationships with compassion. You cannot automate compassion. You commit an uh, uh, animal or something, cry, right? But you can't imitate feelings, the heart, the wisdom, the soft side, um, and the true involvement of that in thought processes. So much you could automate. And you could and you should to give us more time to do other work. But that aspect of it, you must learn to integrate it. Otherwise, there's exploitation and a new form of slavery again. You become a, a robot. Who wants a robot? It has to be an enabler, enhancer for the common good to improve ministry, um, maintaining your relationship and maintaining your personhood. You are person made in the image and likeness of God, of God who is communicative. You too have that in you. In terms of Trinidad and Tobago, so this program, for example, we're talking here now, Altos, wasn't around a year ago. So church communication has changed, changed a lot yeah. over the years. Individual parishes now have uh, Facebook pages, Instagram pages. So it's no longer just one voice coming out there. 
what, where do you see um, church communication in Trinidad and Tobago heading and where are the opportunities and I guess with that what are some of the challenges? Same thing, it's basically, we want to use more AI-based um, stuff. I mean, we've got to be on top of it, to be relevant and to be connected, especially to the young people. And they like stories, um, their attention spans short, the imagery is important. If you look at the 5K, I had to end up doing a little you know, transition. You know, we have to capitalize on the use of all the technologies, again, with the boundaries, and expand. Um, our people haven't changed. Everything is fed to us from away. All right, so we are on top, we should be on top, but I think you don't have to, you don't lose your personhood and your Caribbean flavor. We are who we are. You, you have to integrate all that in the process. The music, the dance, the drama, the stories, the painting, you know, the beauty and the goodness of the truth of the culture. And that is what we have to use now. You just can't stick and pace what comes down for us from foreign. We really have to make a flavor of that to keep that relevance and attention. And um, again, to go to the ends of the earth to preach good news in a very dynamic way. And uh, final question, Father. I know we have the 5K tomorrow, and that's a bit of a historic step for the Catholic News uh, and the Church in Trinidad and Tobago to um, organize something like this. And it is on the back of World Day for Social Communications. Give us a little bit about um, why this has been done and what's the intention of organizing well, this 5K? It's, it's powerful. To, to put a link to World Communication Day is not very well um, propagated and promoted. And to link it, because um, it's an activity to bring awareness, one, for the, what we've been talking about, the need to use the medium in a balanced way to integrate and to improve. And um, I also want to tag on for community building. Everybody's so excited from all religions want to come in a common space. I call cricket brings us together. Apparently, church does not. Huh. So this would be a new church. When I went to the um, Savannah for the pa panorama, I literally built an, al an altar at the top there. People were saying, next time I bring in my priest, you know, <laughs> because we have to take it out from the pews to the pavement. People are going to be coming, coming there and be touched, one, by the, the community, by the communicative aspect of it, one, the theology of the body, this body will rise. So you have to enhance this body, keep this body, so wellness management could be there, right. community, and also the link to raise some funds, if we could eventually, to, to sp spread the good news through using all the different platforms that come to us in a balanced approach, approach. So it's a launch to do it, like take it out of the studio, out of the church, to where people are. Where people are. Excellent. Thank you very much, Father Christo, for joining us here on Altos. And we certainly look forward to chatting more with you in the future and continuing to expand the communications in Trinidad and Tobago. We'll take a short break. And when we return, we wrap up Altos for this week. Stay tuned. Altos, from the Latin Altos, meaning high. Every Friday night, we feature the top news items hot off the press. We are taking a leap of faith on Trinity TV. Jump in with us for this new and exciting experience. And welcome back to Altos. Well, we are just a few hours away from the very first Catholic News Steps for Hope 5K and 1K Run and Walk. The race will be staged tomorrow, Saturday, May 11th, starting and ending opposite Archbishop's House on the Queen's Park Savannah. Archbishop Charles Jason Gordon will be on hand to get the hundreds of runners, joggers, and walkers on their way at 4.30. The 1K for children under 12 starts at 3.30, so we encourage you, if, if you are not participating, to come out and join the excitement and show your support as we welcome members of the church from around the country, including Tobago. In some more sporting news, Presentation College of San Fernando retained their national school's intercall cricket title last week Friday, defeating fellow Catholic boys' school Fatima College in the final. The final was played at the National Cricket Center under lights in Balmain, Coover. It was actually a rematch of last year's final. Prayers batting first, lost an early wicket but despite that they put together a formidable total of 168 for five with a top score of 55 from brendan Boodoo, who was striking the ball to all parts of the ground in reply fatima lost an early wicket isaiah fernandez he was the man getting out caught but skipper joshua davis ensured fatima were in the match he scored a 35 in style, a superb straight six over the boundary.
But after he fell, Fatima lost wicket steadily, and they could only reach 131 for six in their 20 overs. Presentation winning by 37 runs to ensure the Intercol Trophy stays them and stays with them and stays south for another year. Congratulations to both teams. And fellow Southern College School, St. Benedict's College, they, as well as Fatima College, competed in the pen relays in Philadelphia in April this year. Fatima's Tyreek Vincent placed the seventh overall in the long jump with a jump of 6.71 meters and became the first Fatima athlete to reach a field event final. The Fatima 4x400 relay team placed ninth in the final with a time of 3 minutes 37.74 seconds. And St. Benedict's 4x100 meter international relay team, they were sixth in the finals in a time of 42.34 seconds. Congratulations to the two schools for representing Trinidad and Tobago to their very best. Well, away from sport, we take a look now at some of the clergy celebrating anniversaries. Congratulations to Father. Well, we extend condolences to the family and friends of Diana Reiner, who passed away last week, Saturday, May 4th. Reiner was involved in the St. Mary's Mukarapu community and gave her time at the Living Water community, always with a smile on her face. She was also part of the National Hospitality Ministry. A funeral mass is carded for Saturday, May 11th. May she rest in peace. Let's take a look now at some of the events coming up in the Archdiocese. And as we get, to get set to celebrate Mother's Day this Sunday, uh, editor of the Catholic News, Raymond Sims, tells us about what's in this week's paper. In this Sunday's issue, dietitian Cherise Brondi Tinku gives moms important dietary self-care tips. And read a summary of the Pope's World Social Communications Day message. I am Raymond Sims, editor of the Catholic News. Make sure and pick up your copy at your parish this weekend. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode of Altos on Trinity and TTT. A reminder, you can send us any correspondence you have. The email is altos at catholicttt.org. We end with the mothers of the commissions and departments of the Archdiocese in the Belmont Pastoral Campus being serenaded by the young men of, of the staff there. We thank you for viewing. Do enjoy the rest of your week. I know